Well, hello, Coffee Time friends. We're back with part two of that beef stew that we started earlier, and Mama's going to do cornbread. So, uh, it's been simmering for an hour and 40 minutes. I don't know. Something like that. So, Mama's going to do the cornbread and uh, show you how she mixes it up. She's already got a, a uh, 10 inch iron skillet in there with some. What kind of oil do you use, Mama? Just uh, vegetable oil. Vegetable oil. So I put a cup of meal. And this is just uh, Martha White Lily or Martha White, whatever it was. White Lily. And a half a cup of uh, flour. flour in there. It's White Lily flour, for sure. That keeps you from, supposed to be keep you from choking and hold it together. And right here is uh, one egg. Checked. This is my buttermilk. It's shaking. <laughs> Shake it up, Mama. What are y'all up to? Hi, John and Mama. Hey, John and I Mama. I pour till I get it. Let's see. Hello again. Hey, Phil. Um, Phil and Loretta, welcome back. We'll probably have to do some more part twos, ones and twos, as we go along, because sometimes when we're making stuff like chili or if we make meatloaf um, in the oven it'll take an hour or so that takes a minute and she went over there and put just a little bit of water um, that thins it out and it's on all the buttermilk show them the consistency mama let me get it off my spoon here this is just mixed up good enough. You can show them I'm going to bring my skillet over. It's it mixed up good. You want to get your... It may not be hot enough. Mama likes it thinner. Sometimes I make two cups of meal to make it thicker. And what you're looking for when you're doing it thick or thin is if you're the type of person that likes more of the center, then you want to do a little bit more because you're always going to have the same amount of crust. Except if you have more middle, then your crust is not as as much. Mama likes it thin and crusty. Um, I don't care to have a little of the middle, so sometimes I do a little bit thicker cornbread. Mama likes thinner cornbread. There you go. Now here is the hot, hot iron skillet. It may not be as good as I hot think it's I... pretty hot, Mama. And this is the uh, vegetable oil in here, and I'm going to hold this differently so y'all can see it. So. It's not as hot as usual. You're right, Mama. No, because I've not had it in that long. You want it to sizzle. And it didn't sizzle. But it was hot. I can feel the heat. I think it was just a few minutes before sizzle. Before sizzle. <laughs> it would have sizzled. In that just was a pretty second. good. Okay. Thank you. More, most of the time it sizzles good and you have that great crusty sizzle. Now some people don't even heat it. They say there's no point in it. Uh, we always have, whether it's a point in it or not, we think it is. Uh, hello from Buffalo, New York. Gail, how's the weather up in New York? It's still 84 degrees here at 8 o'clock. 809, actually. So it's still hot here. We we had a few, well, a week or so of almost autumn-like weather. Uh, one day, we just got barely to 80 for our highs. You know, this today, it's been up in the 90s, it's been warm. Uh, the mosquitoes are out. Uh, oh, oh they're you know. awful. Yeah, they are. Uh, bugs are out, and these fruit flies. Oh, these fruit flies. There, Y'all got fruit flies where you're at. Everybody I've talked to around here said, yes, we have them. So it may not have been Mama's cantaloupe after all. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> all I know is, the evidence points toward the I cantaloupe. I me no, no, I don't think so. Uh, the evidence pointed that way because we've had them bad twice at both times it was after she got cantaloupe. I think it maybe just excited them and they got all excited about the cantaloupe and they <laughs> buzzed around more. Hello from North Carolina. Hey, Melody. How are you? Hey, Kimberly. How are you? I can't remember what that was. Uh, Star Idaho. Well, Kimberly, you're from Star Idaho. That would... That's a neat name. Hi from Colorado. Hey, Cindy. How are you? Um, 
So what are y'all cooking tonight? Remember, if you comment, it'll put you in the rotation for notifications. So just comment hi, or uh, just comment part two, like I'm seeing part two here. Uh, if you're doing a replay, just type replay, and that'll let us know you're on replay, and it also will get you in that circulation for notifications. Uh, while you guys are eating late, Rose, I would agree with you, but it, it's become our norm. I'm, I work later. We used to eat around 6 to 7. Now we're 8 o'clock eating, and uh, the other night I was at 9 o'clock eating. Uh, I'm telling you, it's it's a different world. I'm hoping when it, winter gets here and it's darker earlier, we'll, we won't be as busy or something. Happy Monday! Janice, it is a great Monday. Mondays are not my... Uh, the least favorite day of the week for me. I really enjoy all the days, certain ones and for certain things. Of course, I enjoy the weekend knowing I'm off. If I am off, sometimes I have had to work, but sometimes, um, you know, other people have different weekends. Some people's weekend may have started today. Uh, hello from Western Arkansas. Will Willoda, is that your name, Willoda Andrews? I like that name. Someone just sent me a text. Hamburgers, broccoli, green beans, and mac and cheese. Well, that sounds good, Jackie. Jackie, you've covered it. Hamburger helper, butter, beans, and cornbread and sweet tea. Brenda, I love all those. I love butter beans. I even like lima beans. Hello from South Florida. Lynn, I bet you got nice weather down there. Taco salad for us tonight. Oh, Kathy, I love that's one of my favorites too. Somebody told me on here one day said, John, everything's your favorite. And I said, I can't can't dispute that. I have to agree with you. Hey John and Mama. We had baked oh, baked lemon pepper chicken, Becky. Oh, isn't it good? And a nice garden salad. Too hot to cook. Yes, it is a little hot to cook. We're having winter food. We're having we should have had this last week when the temperatures were lower. But we had that roast and we didn't want barbecue. We a lot of times we'll barbecue it. Sometimes we'll use the leftover mashed potatoes, put a little bit more cream in them and uh, mix them up good and uh, have open face roast beef sandwiches. And we'll just then we use this put that gravy and put the meat in it, stir it up, put it in a um, in a kettle and get it good and hot and then pour it over the light bread but neither one of us really wanted that tonight and um, I just asked mama at lunchtime I said so what are we cooking tonight and she said you know I've been thinking I might take that roast and make beef stew and I said well you know what mama I was just thinking the same thing this morning I'd like to have some good beef stew so you know, foods really aren't seasonal. We just make them seasonal. Chili is good in July, the same as it is in January. But it seems like as soon as the first cold snap comes, we start hollering, let's make a big old pot of chili. And stay in. It's kind of like hot chocolate. I never think about hot chocolate in July. I probably should. But it's always on those cold winter nights, especially when you've been out and you come in and you think, Ooh, some good hot chocolate with a marshmallow on it would be good. Do y'all put miniature marshmallows in yours? Um, sometimes I go back and put a few more. Like I'll put a helping of miniature marshmallows and then I'll eat those off and then I'll think, oh, I'll put a few more. Um, good, good, good. I love it. We are having pork chops. Ginger, that sounds good too. That's one of Mama's favorite meals is pork chops. Uh, my favorite would be probably a pork chop too or... Roast, probably roast. That was your daddy's my, roast. And... Probably my Christmas or my birthday dinner is a roast kind of dinner and a double chocolate cake. Double chocolate cake with chocolate icing. I like a double round chocolate cake, two tier, two layers, chocolate icing in the middle. And I get that every year. Um, since it's just me and Mama here most of the time uh, on my birthday, Mama does a um, half a cake mix. And she makes a one round cake. She cuts it in half when it cools and stacks it on top. So we have a double layer cake with icing in the middle. Except it's just a half. And she even icings that one side. So you still get all covered in icing. So if y'all thinking, I like double layer, but it's just too much for me to eat. Do a half one. And uh, you can still have that. And it only makes about six pieces. So uh, 
That's if a, you're a pig like me, it wouldn't hardly make six pieces. Mama can graze that out in two days. <laughs> I sure can. Mama, um, like for a pan of brownies, Mama won't, she'll eat one brownie. And then the rest of her brownies is little cuts, little slivers, <laughs> about that wide. Little nibbles. Little on. nibbles, and she'll eat that. Then she'll go on, and you'll see her come back then, and she'll cut another little bit. She does the same thing with fruit cake at Christmas time. She'll nibble that thing down to nothing. That's what they're for. To eat. All day long, though, Mama, you do it. You sort of just make it a, an event. I keep it leveled out so it won't. <laughs> Mama is picky, picky, picky about pies and cakes. You really have to watch how you cut them. If you mess them up. Somebody cuts holes right in the middle. I did that one time. Once. And it was after Thanksgiving and the cat pie was already three-fourths gone and I just cut a square out. To aggravate me. And she got mad as far. What if I'd done that on day one? Like, we opened it up for Thanksgiving. You wouldn't be here to talk. <laughs> like, open it up for Thanksgiving in a big square out of the middle of it. You wouldn't be here talking. Why, she would have. Ooh. <laughs> that would have been bad. Yeah. You know, Are y'all picky about the way you slice a pie? Even a cake. Even like my birthday cake. She wants it triangular all the way down. Just the right way to do stuff. See, I might just come through and see that and just cut off that corner piece and go ahead and eat it. I don't like that. Mama gets all tore up. Hi, Mama and John. Hey, Linda. Ask them if there's not a right way to cut stuff. If you're Mama, there to is a right way, but... Without a mania cutting it all wrong. A meanie? Yeah, you cut out the middle. I know. Some of y'all just said, John, it's too late for coffee. Yes, it is. I agree 100%. You'll be up all night. No, I'm tired. Uh, but I'm just, I limited myself to half a cup. And I drank it up to about 5.30 anyway. So I'm not really saving that much for cutting it off now. I'll cut off by 9. I promise. I do have to get up in the morning. Cornbread won't take much longer. It'll be about 10 more minutes. As soon as we get the cornbread out, we'll cut it up and we'll bowl it up and we'll let you all go and enjoy your evening. Now, I don't know if where you all live, but it's what we refer to as dusky dark out there right now at 818. Now, not too many weeks ago, at 930, it was daylight. So the time is a change, and as they say, so at eight twenty, it was the sun had gone down, and right now it's that blue hazy dark that I hate to drive in. I hate to drive. I, I don't mind driving in darkness, and I don't mind driving in the evening, but when it's that twilight, sort of not dark, not daylight, my eyes don't focus as good in that light. Do you all have that problem? Is it just a matter of age? Um, but the time doesn't change. I want to say November the 6th or the 5th. Is that right, Mama? I don't really know. It's late this year. So um, we'll fall back. Now, I'm hearing rumors. I don't know. You all tell me if you've heard. This is the last change. Uh, I think they passed it. So we are on what they refer to as daylight savings time now. So we'll go back to standard time in the fall and we'll fall back one hour so it'll be 7 20 now and it'll be this dark and um that's it we don't change no more we'll stay on standard time it'll be interesting next summer to see it getting dark earlier it'll be some people will like it some people won't can you cut cornbread wrong karen that's been a debate in this household my whole life my dad didn't want it cut at all. He said that was, who was we, fancy people? <laughs> but he wanted to break it. He wanted all to go. All the way around he wanted to break because it. Because he wanted the corn. He just wanted the edges. The so crust. he would break all the way around. So by the time you got through eating, you had a, a round 
all broke up yeah, center. That was all you had. No, no crust. Mama always cut it. But if he could get a hold of it, he would have it broke before she could cut it. And he said, what are you cutting that for? You think you're fancy people? So in his eyes, that was fancy cornbread. But Mama then compromised and she would cut half of it and leave him the other half to break around up. So everybody was happy. <laughs> um, even worse, if it is raining when it is... Uh, going from daylight to dark yeah Joe Ellen I can't I can't drive like that it's those and oh ooh, mm, I'm gonna get on my soapbox for a minute these new cars I I'm okay with new cars but their lights are bright enough to see the moon they can spotlight trees and it's in my eyes and now they've got blue looking lights oh they're awful blinding lights and they blind me. I just have to pray to the Lord that the road I'm on has a, a white line and I can stare at it till I get past that car. Because if not, I just be I just have to stop. Um, used to lights weren't like that. Now, the, and and they're not on high beam. They're just bright. Um, now I know our vehicles got bright lights, but they're not that bright. These will. Pop your eyeballs out there so bright. Pop <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> They're really bright. <laughs> I've got a friend, and he's to this day makes fun of me. Used to, even when I was in high school, I was so light sensitive. I had to wear sunglasses at night to drive with lights. And he'd say, I can't believe you're going to wear them. I said, I can't see if I don't wear them. These lights blind me in so he'd say, put them sunglasses on, it's midnight, let's drive home. <laughs> but I couldn't take the lights coming at me, and they weren't even that bad then. Uh, as I got older, it seemed like my light sensitivity got a little better. I don't have to drive with sunglasses on now. Uh, it may be the windshields are different, I don't know. Uh, you're tinting glasses when the light reflects. I don't think that that kind of light will tint on Mama. Oh. I believe it would just be sunglasses. I don't know, they don't tint. Um, I don't know, but it's not as bad as it used to be. I didn't know this until my uh, the eye doctor told me, but when you hit in your 40s, your eye muscles start doing their last little job there. And my eyes changed through my 40s like crazy. Uh, ever, sometimes in six months, I'd have to have a different prescription. And I'd be running around wearing readers on top of these regular glasses. And uh, I had to, because I couldn't see. And um, to read. I didn't wear them all the time that way. And But he said, you know, once you start headed toward that 48, 49, 50 mark, your eyes probably won't get a whole lot worse in your 50s, your 60s, and your 70s, and on up through. Um, it's, not a, it's not a progression. It's kind of like the dog years of your eye deterioration. It's like 7 to 1. <laughs> And then they just level out. Um, but uh, it was interesting because just like he said, I woke up one morning, I couldn't see my paperwork. I went to work and I was like, I can't see this. What is wrong here? And I had some readers at work. I didn't even really have to use them. But I had some readers at work and I had to use them that day and every day after. It was like overnight, I went from being able to see to... Everything was blurry. And that's when I had to go with the bifocals or progressive lenses. And um, as time went on, you know, that didn't change that much. But they got a little stronger. But it was but it was a very quick process to go in from, I can see, just, you know, to, I, I can't see. <laughs> so if you all are in your 40s, early 40s, don't be surprised if one morning you get up and you can't read the paper or you can't see your phone be more like it. I don't even know. Do we even have papers? Does anybody ever get the daily paper anymore? Don't be surprised if you're doing this and you have to get longer arms or closer. It happens real overnight. You, you may be fine today and tomorrow wake up and you're like, I can't see. And uh, that's, that's a part of the whole aging process, I guess. 
Did that happen to you, Alan? Did you just have to have Raiders all of a sudden? Judy Thompson, I'm afraid that's what I've heard. Judy said, better not be right. She don't like the standard tub. I've heard that. Y'all look it up and let us know. Uh, I think that they did pass it. I know it was in the, the House or the Senate or both. And some one of you all actually told me, because I thought we didn't change anymore after the last time we changed. And one of you all said, no, we got to change one more time, and then we don't change anymore. I'm going to try this. Sylvia, what are you trying? Somebody make something? Someone posted about having a pineapple sandwich. Um, is that what y'all are talking about, a pineapple sandwich? Are you talking about a pineapple mayonnaise sandwich? If you're wanting to try that, it is good. I'm 56 and I just started uh, seeing differences, but still single vision. Well, um, Crystal, I hope you got to keep that. I don't, I think I was, oh, you're 56, so yeah, you, you've done well. Um, I think I was 45 or something when mine really went, phew. 40, yes, I had to get glasses, um, uh, for uh, goodness, Mary, is that what you're saying? Yes, I'm 45. I had to get by folks at 43. It's crystal, yeah. Uh, I turned 40 and I, something's going on here. Uh, couldn't see phone numbers. Yeah, Dorothy. It just happens. Uh, yes, I never needed readers until 42. Jamie, I think that's when I started doing readers occasionally. And then I really just... My eyes were getting progressively worse, and I don't know if I was tired. I had to use the readers. If it, you know, if it was really fine print, I had to use the readers. So I, I played with them for a year or two. But one morning I went to work, and I, I had to have couldn't see any of my paperwork. I was like, I can't see it no matter where I put it, no matter where I, I, I over here, down here, up it. There was no seeing it. I had, it was blurry everywhere, <laughs> and uh, I had to use it. And I just put them on. The readers didn't satisfy me, and these didn't satisfy me, or this prescription didn't, so I just put them on over top of it, so I'd be wearing two pair of glasses. Someone would come into my office and they'd say, are you? I said, yes, I'm wearing two pair of glasses. Was... <laughs> I was bitter. No, I wasn't. I wasn't. <laughs> it was funny, but they'd say, you really want to see that bad. You got on two pair of glasses. I had lens replaced, Andrea. Yep. I had that several times. <laughs> For sure. Yes, I was 40 and suddenly I could not focus. Sally, that's exactly right. You've been wearing glasses? 73. Mama was 73 when she got her first pair, but let me tell you, she needed them before then. I needed readers before then. <laughs> As the doctor said to Mama last summer or this year, Miss <laughs> Davis, if you can't pass this test, I'm not going to be able to allow you to drive. Mama said, what? He said, if you can't read the certain line on here, I can't approve you to drive. And she said, well, I'll read it. You just tell me which one, <laughs> which one it is. <laughs> Have Good a wonderful one, evening, John. I love y'all. Ginger, we love y'all too. Haven't heard y'all talk about Maggie in a while. Is she okay? She is okay. She's not on top of the world. Um, She's had some stomach issues, and how I know that is she was eating some grass. Um, and when, anytime she eats grass, I start watching her monitor, and the, and the vet has given me medicine. So she's had a little bit of that today, but she had a rough night last night. I don't know if it's her age. I don't know if her arthritis is changing. I'm going to take her in for a checkup. Uh, she doesn't sleep as well as she did, but she sleeps all the time. Um, her sleeping habits really haven't changed. She'll get up in the morning when I get up, and she'll stay up an hour or so. And if I work from home, she lays at my feet all day. And if I don't work from home, then she goes back to bed. And I don't know what time her mama gets up. And uh, she'll she has her periods of an hour or so, and then she wants to go outside and lay in the grass a while, and then she sleeps. She probably sleeps. 
18, 19 hours a day, but she's not been sleeping at night. And uh, she gets up and walks the floors. I don't know. I don't want to. I don't know if she gets up and then she can't find her way back to her bed. I'm, I'm, I'm playing with these ideas because if I holler at her, like Maggie, come on, come in here, you know, she comes in and she tends to go to bed and lay down. It's almost like she wakes up in a panic that we're not home because we're not up. And it's like she's pacing the force like she does when we are gone. Uh, that's the reason anytime we're gone, we usually try to get somebody to come over, even to church or anything. We don't. There's usually somebody at this house 24 hours a day because Maggie. Uh, and she don't want to go nowhere. So we can't take her with us. We used to take her with us. Like if we were going to spend Saturday at the farmer's market and run to the produce place and run into Walmart or run somewhere for five minutes or ten, be gone two or three hours, we'd just take Maggie with us. She even had her little travel bowl of water. She had, you know. Um, but we took her for a ride one Sunday afternoon, and we had to come home. She was, uh, for the lack of a better term, she was having a panic attack. She always sat in the back, and she always loved it. Didn't have no problems. She would get up between the seats and kind of look around, and she'd lay back down. She just wanted the hum of the vehicle. And uh, she was trying to get up on the console, trying to get it. And, you know, she don't want to be held at all, but she was just wanting me to hold her. And she got up between Mama and I and laid down on the console and had her arm, up, her head up under my arm. And I had to hold her like this, kind of... It was... It bothered me because she was so tore up. So, uh, I told Mom, I don't know if something bothered her or if it was just the ride. Uh, so, I took her to the vet a week or two later and shaked her the same way. And the vet's just a half a mile from our house and uh, she acted the same way and I, so we just don't take her now mama's going to flip this cornbread I'll set it this way so you flip can... it mama flip it I hope it flips well look how beautiful it wasn't very hot wasn't hot but it worked anyway that's some beautiful cornbread folks but she's doing okay. We're not concerned about her not sleeping because she only does that occasionally. And it, it, sometimes, even if it's like, I know this sounds crazy, it, even if it's something I don't hear, there'll be a noise that will disturb her. Um, either a gunshot in the distance or you can tell that she's heard something that that scared her in, outside. And... Um, so sometimes it's, I'm like, maybe she heard something and got up and paced around a little bit. But I'm going to say for the better portion of the nights, she will sleep all night. Uh, but sometimes we have them rowdy nights where she's pacing the floors half the night. Uh, and But if I'll holler at her, or not holler, but you know, say, Maggie, come here. And uh, she hears my voice, she'll come. And she'll get in her bed and lay down, and she seems to be comforted. So sometimes when I hear her get up, she sleeps in my bed, in my bedroom, and not in her bed in my bedroom. And sometimes when I first hear her get up, I'll say, Maggie, girl. Can you reach the knife down my cut the bread? Yes, ma'am. I'll say, Maggie, girl, where are you going? And she'll go back to bed. So I don't know. Now, let me tell you something. Maggie is a dreamer. Um, do you, does your talks... Uh, that's the reason I think sometimes she wakes up in the middle of a dream and it she's either looking for the rabbit she was chasing in her dreams or she, whatever was after her in her dreams or maybe she's reliving something that she went in the trauma she went through before we got her um, but she has this little I won't try to I won't try to make it sound like it because I just mess it up see even after all these years we cut half of it and leave half of it. Because that's what Dad always liked. It. It, old habits are hard to break. Um, she'll bark in her sleep. And I'm not saying make a noise. I'm saying it, it's not a full bark like she is when she's awake. But you can hear it going, ooh, ooh, ooh. Jimmy, it's under her breath. It's under her breath that she's barking. And uh, she'll run. Both, all four legs. When she's laying there. And you know she's dreaming. So sometimes when she wakes up from one of those active dreams, she's a little sideways. 
Look here, folks. This is why we like ours, and I know a bunch of y'all are going to say, oh, that's too watery. I don't... Mm, she don't stir up my mama. Oh, okay. We don't... We like it. Here's your phone. We I'll like that... Cheese. Yes, please. We, this is our favorite part, is the juice. And that's what we like, and I don't like it thickened. In, that's good. I don't like it thickened at all. And I don't want it thick tomorrow either. I want it to be like that. Is Mom and I the only crazy people out there who like that? Are you all saying, I can't believe you're eating that old watery stew. I want mine good and thick. There's two camps. People like it thick, or they like it like this. My dog kicks all night. Does Lori see? They're dreaming. My dog does that too. Thank you, Marilyn. Out Maggie's out now. Sierra was not that big of a dreamer. I don't think. Uh, do you remember Sierra she being never like barked me? or chased us? <laughs> Maggie will bark out loud every once in a while. One or two barks, just like, and you'll look over and she's sound asleep, but you'll hear her go whoo, and you're like, Is she alright. And you look over and she's sound asleep. Bless it, Mama. We're going to bless our food and then Mama can eat. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this wonderful meal. We thank you for these precious hands that prepared it, dear Lord. And dear Lord, we just want to ask for the nourishment of our body. Keep us in good health, dear Lord, and be with us and be with all of our friends and all the prayer requests, those spoken and unspoken, dear Lord. And dear Lord, just be with our leaders and our world and be with all those out there that are hurting and need comfort. In your name we pray. Amen. Um, but yeah, you know, Maggie's a dreamer, so I think sometimes her dreams keep her up. Pull y'all up. Thank you for those stars, Renee. Thank you for those stars. Such either way is good, thick or thin. Thank you, Tammy, for not saying that looks awful. <laughs> Beef stew looks delicious, Mama. Hey, Marjorie. Thank you. I like it both ways, but I do like tomatoes in my beef stew. Now Joyce, I'm just going to tell you, I've never had that, but I'm perfectly willing to try tomatoes in it. Because I love tomatoes, period. And I think that would be good in it. Mom, have you ever had tomatoes in it? No, this is the only way I've ever made it. When we put tomatoes in it, even if we put beef in it, we call it soup. And we put quite a bit of tomatoes. But Joyce, that would be a good... Do you, okay, Joyce, let's talk a minute. So are you saying you just cut up tomatoes or you put a can of diced tomatoes in it? <coughs> you all right, Mama? Mm -hmm. Or would that... Is that more like the broth is tomato we broth? I call that beef soup. Looks yummy. Um, my stew is thickened like a gravy. Um... That, Tammy, that may be what Mama and I should call ours all the time. It's beef soup. Vegetable beef soup because we do like it soupy. Uh, traditionally, stews are stewier, <laughs> thicker. Um, but uh, we both like the, I like the broth. I love it just thin and I love it to sop up my cornbread. Do y'all know that word sop? <laughs> do y'all know what a sop is? If you say sop it up, that just means you put your cornbread in there. This is how I eat mine, just like Mama eats hers. We just take a little piece of cornbread, and I don't want it all in there. I just put one little piece in there like that, and I let that cornbread sop it up some of that juice. And then I, I don't want it crumbled up in there. But once it's sopped it up some, then I eat it like this, and then I'll eat some of the vegetables, and then I'll eat another bit of cornbread. We do sopping in the South. My granny tells a story, or used to tell a story, about a preacher. Back in those days, every church didn't have a pastor. Uh, some churches shared a pastor, and you may have a pastor once a month or twice a month or you know they was circuit riding preachers and they would have a circuit literally and they'd go to different churches and preach and uh, they would stay all day and they would have morning service and they would have an evening service and somebody would take them home 
for the Sunday, and they'd feed them dinner, and they'd sit around the porch and take a nap, and then they'd come back for evening service. And uh, Granny said she had one one time. She didn't know him, and uh, her and Pat Ballin said uh, he ate and ate and ate and ate. And Granny got worried that maybe she hadn't fixed enough or that he wanted something different, you know. And she said, uh, can I get you anything else? He said, no, I'm just about finished. I can't get it to even up. And she said he'd get a piece of bread, and then he'd put some gravy out on his plate. And then he'd have too much gravy, so he'd have to have another piece of bread. Then he'd have too much bread, and he'd have to put a little bit more gravy. And she said he just kept going back and forth, and she said, he said, I can't get it to even up. She said it was just his way of saying, I'm going to have some more of that. <laughs> but Granny was a good cook. No doubt about it. So, folks, we're going to say good night. Yeah. We've, we've been on here twice tonight. I think it worked out pretty good having a part one and two. This way, we you did get to see the finished product, and it took Aaron 30 minutes to cook. Because Mama cooks it low and slow. Um, it just barely simmers. Uh, you can cook it fast if you want, but we've always just cooked low and slow on that, ain't we, Mama? Yeah, if you boil it hard, you potatoes is all mashed up. And it's not as and good. Your carrots. And your carrots get mushier and all that good stuff. But it's been it's been nice getting to see y'all twice tonight. Uh, so if we do those long meals, we can come on and do uh, two parts, and we can still do some of those meals that we've not been doing because of the time frame of the life. It's nice to have cornbread for a time. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. The stew's good, but boy, that cornbread's sure going to be good because we've not had any cornbread in weeks. It's been a while, I'll tell you. It's been a while. We was having it two or three times a week. And it's not been back. that way here. We've cut back on that little thing. Look, I've almost eaten a whole piece of it. <laughs> this looks delicious right here, I'm telling you. I can't wait to get into that cornbread. Folks, y'all have a great night. Be blessed. Have a, Make some memories. I hope y'all have already eaten for the yeah, night. It's bedtime. Because it's, um, it's nice most bedtime. bedtime. We're really late. We're going to do better once our schedules calm, out a little, calm down a little bit. Everything irons out a little bit. We'll be doing a little bit better, hopefully. We always did eat around seven, didn't we, Mama? Six most of the time. Six when we was and then when I was it growing went up. To seven. And yeah. now it's eight and it's almost nine now, so it's got to stop somewhere. We're getting worse. <laughs> We're gonna be eating breakfast before long. <laughs> 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 Mama, you got anything you wanna to add tonight? No. This this is gonna be delicious. Yeah. And just Good night, Mama, and God bless you all. Bye-bye. Oh, Mama, this is out of this world. You did good. I reckon. That beef and broth made it good. It sure did. It's good enough. I'm going to let you do it again if you want to. Oh, you're so kind. <laughs> <laughs> and that roast is done real well because we had... Uh, Sunday dinner out of it. Yes. Now we've got this stew, and I see it got some. Oh. Left for another meal for us. So we may end up barbecuing some after all. Might barbecue some or eat it some way, open face. So something. you got it on sale, and we've mm -hmm. made two suppers out of it, and I'm going to probably do at least a lunch or two. Yeah, lunch anyway with it. Doing good, Mama. That's good. Say good night, Mama. I done say good night, Mama. You was asleep when I said <laughs> Good night, Good night. <laughs> Bye.